My name is Steve Inglehart. I'm the Director of Strength and Conditioning for Olympic Sports and Men's Basketball. We are at the beautiful uh, campus of University of Colorado. We're right now in the CU Event Center, AKA the KEG. It gets crazy in here when we win. I love it here. When you first hear about Connects On, all, all you think about is the NBA. And everybody that sits in, our, in my office when we're doing a recruiting process, or coach's office, they always say their dream is to play in the NBA. That is, my dream is where I'm sitting, where I'm standing right now. I always wanted to be a strength and conditioning coach for basketball, right? When you have uh, the, the world's best league of basketball, the NBA, and they use Connects On, there's, there's no better recruiting tool than that. Convincing the, the athletic department of why we should get Connects On was pretty easy. Like I said, we, we, we went from safe zone. We had safe zone already. Everybody was used to it, so all we had to do was transition over to performance. It was super easy. We sent in the tags, they sent them back. We're using it the next day. The biggest takeaway was the athletic department knew how important Connects On was to me, to Adam Ringler, and to our staff to know what are we trying to do here? We're trying to keep our players playing at their optimal level as well. Uh, as well as being in the last the whole season and knowing how hard is too hard. It allows you to know what's actually going on with each particular player. And if you don't have connects on, the limitations are you really don't know if you're right or wrong, right? You could be right, you could be wrong. But uh, I like to say I'm not getting lucky anymore, I'm getting right. I think seeing connects on data after a game is huge, right? Uh, it, it, it allows you to know how hard certain players were playing this particular game. E uh, evidently, it's gonna be based on how we play. Obviously, we wanna play in transition, we wanna be fast. But I think at the end of the day, it allows us to take all the metrics from what we accumulated during the game and say, how are we gonna get this player ready in one day rest to play again on a Saturday? We usually play on a Thursday, Saturday, so that Friday is huge for us, especially if somebody plays 38 minutes to 36 minutes. And depending on what kind of style we play that day, which is we want to be fast, so that's what we expect. So on a particular day, we could have a, a guard or a forward being a very high load or a high load, and we need to be able to say, hey coach, we, we need a rest, we need to calm down this guy, we need to do some soft tissue work, we need to do a lot of recovery. And Coach Boyle allows us to do that. We had a particular player, 6'10". Uh, if you looked at his stat numbers, you would say, okay, he's not the fastest, he's not the quickest, but he's one of our best perimeter defenders. After a game uh, scrimmage, actually, in October, he came up to me and said, Coach, I was gassed when I was playing defense out there. I need help. We, I sat him down, I pulled the last two weeks of practice of what uh, on each drill, especially the defensive drill. And I said, son, this is where you need to be. You're gonna be tired the first two, the first two days, three days, even the first week. You gotta fight through it. He was one of our best perimeter defenders this year. And why? Like I said, he wasn't the fastest, he wasn't the quickest. He actually worked on it, on defense during practice, and we had the metrics to show him how he improved. What I'm looking forward to the most this year after using Connection for a year and getting my feet a little wet with it is uh, looking at the difference between three days out before a game, two days out, and a day out of the game, right? What did we do last year and what are we going to do differently this year to keep our guys even play at a, at a better optimal level, right? Uh, and I think that's where it's going to come in, especially during practices, knowing knowing this is where they were last year and what happened to this year, right? And I think that's where it's gonna help me tenfold. What people gotta understand is we're strength and conditioning coaches. I'm not a sports scientist. I wish I could say I'm a sports scientist, but I'm not, right? We're coaches and we can learn sports science. And that's what my expectation was, I hope it's not too much, right? And in the beginning, they had a ton of KPIs, a ton of metrics, but like I said, with working with Chris King and Greg, it was 
pretty effortless of what I really wanted to see in practice, what I really wanted to see during the game and how I wanted to use my data. Now, some people think I am a sports scientist and I'm like, no, I'm still a coach. It's just simple to use, right? The metrics are very straightforward and, and, uh, and tells you what you want to know. And I, like I tell coaches all the time, every, every coach has their own philosophy of what is, what is their metric they want to look at for after a game, after a practice. Do you want to undulate practice? Do you not want to undulate practice, right? And connects on metrics are so easy to put that into an Excel format, to even put it in the Connexon uh, app. And once you, once you have it, it's so easy to look at and know if you're doing it right or doing it wrong. The placement of Connexon tags on our players, they don't even know it's there. Um, uh, the way we, uh, we usually put them in the waistband uh, for games and practice and Honestly, effortless. The players do ask probably more questions than the coaches, and I believe that's the way here at the University of Colorado, we want this to be a player-led team. So when players come up to, to me, what does this mean today? I want to get in better shape, coach. I, I feel like I'm gassed during these drills, why? And we can break down different drills and tag them in the Connexon app while practice is going on, and we can allow them to see where they're breaking down at. Right? Obviously, you're playing defense and you're playing against a high level player, you're going to be in high or very high low. And then if you're not used to that, playing defense at that low or that level, you're not going to do it in the game. You have to practice and you have to practice hard. In our Colorado, our culture is hard work, blue collar toughness. Our job here is obviously get bigger, stronger, faster, but one of our jobs as well is to teach these young men how to become men and how to, how to win, right? How to win in life. And I think the, every guy that plays on that court that wears this jersey, even the coaches are super competitive, right? So after practice, after a game, they want to know, hey, who won? Who's in top three, coach? I need to know in top three. Was I in top three on very high and high? Because that's what we look for. And that's when you know the culture is changing. That's when you know we need you to play at this level. Right. And here at Colorado, that's what we want. We want the players asking the questions. Right. We want them to be able to compete each other and go as hard as they can during a practice and during a game. And they, we want to know who's in top three. Right. And if you're doing that, like I said, throughout the course of last year, the culture was changing wearing connects on. Right. Everybody wanted to compete. Of who's going to be in top three in the game? Who's going to be in top three at practice? And I think that's where, like I said, a player led team is much better than a coach led team. So when you got the players competing amongst each other, it's about who's going the hardest at practice in the games, that's what you want.